Hello, good afternoon once again for every citizens of the kingdom in the whole world, and especially here in the Philippines. And uh, we are we are here we here we are here again on the third of the series on our topic with regards to the kingdom and its citizens. Hello, Sister Bang. Good afternoon. And uh, I will intend to finish this subject uh, today. Hello, I'm Kuya uh, Ed. Welcome po. And uh, since we have lots of uh, topics to be discussed after this one, and uh, it's hello, Pastor Adelpha. Welcome po. It's just only good. Hello, Brother Er. It's just only good. Hello, Sister Rosel. But, uh, it's so good to discuss about this topic on uh, with regards to the citizens' benefits and everything. Okay? So, uh, and in the last, last, in this last week, in this week, hello, Pastor Arnold. Uh, we started from crisis. Hello, Pastor Roland. Muntik na ako na ona. Sa susunod, yung mauuna, may price. <laughs> so, last Sunday, I started with the word crisis. Then I, then I talk about the pure kingdom. Then I have another topic. And it's so great. It's so great that uh, God is uh, showing us a lot of revelations that we can uh, learn and live on. Uh, because during this time, it is during this time that... Uh, uh, we will see we will see how how God will be able to work his word in us remember everything starts with the word and uh, hello brother Mark and we need to be deepened on our commitment to the word of God uh, I, I've, I've experienced to to use my capacity, my influence, my money, uh, whatever I have so that I can uh, uh, help people or influence them. But still, one day, these people will, uh, will just leave you. And that was before when I was, uh, when I was living in a religious mindset. But during this time in the kingdom, I've learned a lot uh, concerning uh, my position first, my uh, my status first, my design first, my uh, uh, my cost first. So you've got to understand first what God has given you. Instead, most of the time. We want to help. We want to. Uh, we want to do a lot of things to other people, so that they will join us. But uh, as the as, uh, as the matter of fact, hallelujah, they will join us for some time. But because our commitment or our connection with them is not in the right word, you'll be just assured. You'll be assured that one day these people will leave you. Good afternoon, Pastor Ernie. Hallelujah. Good evening there in the U.S. So, uh, having money to give, having uh, influence to give, having uh, whatever you have to give for other people, it's not a guarantee for people to stay with you. So, <laughs> it's, it's, just, uh, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just sad where, 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 where people stay with you for a long time and suddenly they will leave you because of something, because of like this, because of like that. But here in the kingdom... I begin to I begin to understand I begin to understand a lot of things a lot of things which pertains to relationship to leadership which pertains to <coughs> excuse me which pertains to the cause of our God and we need to understand that everything that we should do in the kingdom should be led should be led by God because this is his kingdom this is not ours that is the reason that is the reason why God has already provided us with protocols 
protocols or divine system uh, that we can that we can work on so that we can move on the cause of God that he has given in our lives we we don't need to invent things apart from the protocol okay and the uh, divisions in the church happens divisions uh, in the church. even right now there's a lot of church uh, who, who are into division division and division but in the kingdom there are no division in the kingdom we have one God we have one message we become one with our God okay so we, we, we don't do we don't do the thing that uh, we are united for the cause of Jesus. No, we don't do that. Hello, engineer baby. We hello, sister Francine. We we, we go to be we we move ourselves to be one with the cause of God. Every one of us, every one of us, every one of us. We go to the cause of our God. Then in God, there is where we will become one. Unlike what we're doing here on earth. Okay? We, we want to become united in Jesus. Okay? As long as we talk about Jesus, we're all right. Uh, let us not talk about doctrines and we will fight. Okay? We will have problems. So that is the trouble. That is the trouble of uh, the united cause of Christians here on earth. And also, that is not uh, what our Lord asks us to do. He didn't ask for us to become united. He asked us to be one. As, he says, as the Father and I are one. And how did Jesus, uh, how did Jesus accomplish that? So look, look at the word. Read the word of God. You can see uh, since Jesus started this ministry. Hello, Carlo. Since Jesus started this ministry, he started this ministry. Hallelujah being acknowledged by the Father God when he was baptized until he was endorsed as the Father was pleased and loved him so Jesus worked on hello sister Margie Jesus worked on every time every time he worked on the cause of the Father he pleases the Father he loves the Father he preached the words of the Father he he establishes the kingdom of the Father. He always speaks about the Father. So that is how Jesus made himself become one with the Father. Okay? So that's what we need to do. And if every one of you who are listening to me, we came from different ministries. And we don't need to become to have a one name. One name so that we can be one. No. You have your own ministry. God called you to uh, to different. God called us to different places, and as long as we are one with the cause of the Father God, as Jesus Christ showed us, we will be one. And for the last uh, for the last two months, I've seen I've I've, I've been seeing you guys, uh, the, the the same names the same names that I'm seeing here, is the names that are hungry and thirsty for the secrets of the kingdom hello pastor Sharon and uh, since uh, the last two months that I've been seeing your name we don't need to become I, I will tell you oh sister Margie you should join my fellowship oh pastor Sharon you should join my fellowship oh pastor Ernie join my fellowship no that is not the cause of Christ that is not the cause of Christ <laughs> that is religion okay we become one Excuse me, I'll just close the uh, window. There's somebody uh, outside that uh, that's uh, maybe he cannot hear his music as well, uh, which makes him. Uh, make his music so loud that even here in the 16th floor you can re you can hear it <laughs> good for him hallelujah so again we can all we can all become one 
when we submit ourselves <laughs> when we submit ourselves to the cause of God our Father okay if you're not, if you're going to submit yourself to me oh come on we will fail we will falter <laughs> so I submit myself to the cause of God and I work on the cause of God just like Jesus showed me and that's what we should do and my purpose right now is to to preach to you to tell you to show you <laughs> the things that Christ preached okay so again we will start in the such that uh, we will have all the time for for this matter and uh, this is the third uh, this is the third uh, parts of the series on the kingdom and its citizens so remember uh, we have the we have the two we have the two part already and we have right now every kingdom every kingdom has a constitution and laws every kingdom has a constitution and laws this provides principles by which the citizens uh, uh, citizens are to live and be governed so constitution and laws are provided there are no there are no nation there are no country there are no uh, kingdom that doesn't have constitution so everyone has a constitution and laws this is the guiding principle by which every country moves and progresses remember jesus christ didn't brought us religion he brought us a kingdom he brought us a government he brought us <laughs> A nation I remember one time I remember one time as the Lord asked me Jade uh, can I build a nation in one day he asked me and, and I said yes Lord you, you, you have made that when Israel uh, when Israel uh, uh, fought fought the uh, fought the Arabians uh, during their time that was 1940s and uh, that was the, the, the six day war hello Pastor Ella and israel won and during the time during the time in one day israel israel became a nation it became a nation and the lord told me can i do it again jade can i do it again and the lord the last time i told the lord how how are you going to do it again what country uh whereby you're going to do that and the lord told me remember this jade every time Every time there's a son who receives my kingdom, a nation is born. Hallelujah. I repeat it again. This is what the Lord told me. Every time a son receives the kingdom, a son activates the kingdom, a son moves in the kingdom, a nation is born once again. And it's like wow well i was so amazed because uh what the lord is telling us each one of us each one of us <laughs> we receive not only a kingdom we receive a nation i am a nation pastor ella is a nation uh, sister margie is a nation pastor ernie is a nation pastor rolando is a nation each one of us since we receive the kingdom that cannot be shaken we are all we are all birthed, God all birthed a nation from all of us. For, for, so from me, a nation will be birthed. A nation will be birthed. And from me, I will start a community of sons bearing the Father's character that I've learned from Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Each one of you, each one of us will birth a nation each one of you the nation that I have I cannot reach the nation that you have I will reach the nation that has my kind of character hello Amba Ed Amba Medel we will birth we will birth a, a, a kind of nation that we have that kind of character we will birth, remember remember in Genesis when the Bible says and God created everything according to its kind 
God created everything according to its kind. Those words, he speaks about discipleship that birthed according to its kind. So discipleship is discipleship is a nation birthing a community according to its according to its creation. So for me, I'm an architect, I'm a businessman, I'm a missionary, and this is what I am. And what I'm doing right now is I am birthing a nation that who has according my kind. I'm birthing a nation according to my kind. So I'm also, uh, I'm also, I'm teaching you with the things that I know, with the things that I have for you to learn on this. Then from your point of view, from your point of view, according to your talent, according to your ability, according to your giftings, according to your assignment, you will birth nation according to your kind. Each one of us will birth nations according to our kind. Hello, Sister Pia. Good afternoon. So each one of us will birth a nation according to our kind. Hallelujah. You don't need to become a pastor or a leader of the church for you to have a church. No. God has called us, has given us a kingdom because God has given us a nation and this nation's purpose is to bring out a community of sons and daughters that burst the character of the Father that Jesus showed us. That's very clear. That's very, very clear. Okay? So, God is calling us. Everything is not dependent on me. Because I know all of this. Because God is using me. And, the, and your work is only to listen to me. No. I am teaching you all of this so that you yourself will become producers. You are not consumers. Remember this. You are not consumers, but you are producers of nations. So when I'm here teaching you these things, hallelujah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm giving to you this kingdom that I also receive from my king. So when you receive this kingdom, you begin, you, you begin to become a nation. A nation born with the principles of the kingdom in it. And from there, you will again start a nation from you. So when you, when you reach somebody and uh, you speak to them the words of the kingdom, and they receive this kingdom, they will become a nation, and they will build another nation among them. So that, this, is, this is actually the power of discipleship, the power of fatherhood. This is about the power of the kingdom. You know what? I would like to tell you this. Many kingdom preachers are preaching about kingdom, uh, about the blessing, about the, the moves in there, about territories, about domains. Yes, that's, that's right. That's right. But if you, if you will not, if you will not attach, if you will not connect, if you will not learn that the kingdom that we preach is all about our God, the Father, which Jesus has taught us, <laughs> the kingdom that you preach is not pure kingdom. Okay? It's not pure kingdom. Hello, Sister Mayat. Good afternoon, Paul. So, <laughs> you need to understand this. Tomorrow, oh, hallelujah. Maybe, maybe tonight, Tonight, but in Tagalog, okay. I, I, I started the series of uh, teaching uh, every every evening, but in Filipino series, I'm going to speak about woman, woman, okay. and each one of us, each one of us has been given that power, the power to build a nation, the power to build a nation. We are not here to build a church. A religious charge <laughs> we are here chosen by God to start a nation which says which, which Jesus said to Peter you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church 
my ecclesia, my senate, my nation. Upon this rock, uh, based upon the principles, based upon the, uh, the principles, the values, the culture of the kingdom that God will set up on the last days, on the days of the kings, I, Jesus Christ, the King of kings, Lord of lords, will build up, will create, will mold, will form, will fill my ecclesia. So look at those words. Jesus Christ will start a nation based on the concept, based on the attitude, based on the operation, based on the principle of the kingdom that he will set up. Hallelujah. The church today, the church today, <laughs> the church today is built upon beliefs. Baptist, the church today, the Baptist uh, moves on their best Baptist belief. The evangelicals, the, uh, the Pentecostal, the full gospel, the charismatic, every one of this has, has, their, has their culture based on their belief. Okay? But us, as a, as a son of the kingdom, as a daughter of the kingdom, we live according to the principles, values, operations, uh, uh, culture of the kingdom where we originally belong. That is the work that God will do to us. Yes, Sister Pia, that's right. Hallelujah. God has called us to build a nation. God has called us to build a nation. So we are not here to build a, a chapter of our church. Remember that? Uh, Jesus Christ ministry, uh, Batangas chapter. Jesus Christ ministry, Sambuanga chapter. Jesus Christ ministry, Isabella chapter. No! <laughs> you know, that, is, that, is the, that is the reason why. Why there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, sons of the kingdoms who are faltering and failing. They've been tired of doing this. They're tired of doing this because, yes, they can grow and grow and affect and influence. But until when? The fulfillment, the fulfillment of our life, the fulfillment of our design, the fulfillment of our choosing by God is on, is on it's on, it's on our accomplishment on producing nations according to what God has given us. Hallelujah. You know what? I led, I led the church before. It's, it's, a, it's a church uh, we call City Harvest Ministries. It's based on Isabella. And during the first six months, really, we got our 500 membership more than, more than. I have the charisma, I have the influence, I know how to talk. And because, yes, and uh, uh, I love God. Yes, I love God. And, uh, but during that time, I was asking, is this, is this, is this all it is? What, what, what happens next? Because we are, we are cell-based church and we can do all those things. I can do all these things. But I begin to question. I begin to question all those, all those accomplishments because we are, we are going province to province to province to province doing our e-camp or evangelistic campaign. I call that evangelistic campaign. We are really go, getting to that. Oh, hallelujah. Signs and wonders are following, following my preaching. And really healings are there. Deliverance are there. And we are giving goods to many people. But the question is, what's next? What's next after these things? And the... You can see, you can grow your ministry. I can grow my ministry. I can build a large, a large, uh, a large building for that. But look at this. Look at what happened on this crisis. There's a lot of buildings that doesn't have people inside. Why? Because the government hold back that every church is not to do services. So what happened to the building? How about the maintenance cost? How about the, uh, uh, the, 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 the payment for for the loan so they needed these things so that they can they can operate so those churches who has big buildings they need to work and work and work and bring in more members more members means more tithes and offerings more tithes and offerings means they can operate the whole the whole uh, the whole uh, 
uh, business, business of the church. Hallelujah. And from there, how about when these things happen? After this, what happens when, when this kind of crisis happens? Every church buildings are empty. And every leaders of the church can, can do nothing. So that is not the cause. That is not the cause of God. That's not the cause of the, the cause of God is for us to affect our work, to affect our our business, to affect our uh, our uh, uh, our community, and from there they need to understand. They need to receive the message of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah! That is our work. Our work is not to church plant. Our work is to sow the seed. <laughs> Our work is not to church plant. Our work is to sow the seed. That's what the Bible says. That's what, that's what Mark chapter 4 says. Sow the seed, then sleep and rest. And tomorrow you will see the seed will sprout. Hallelujah. Our, our work is just like the work of the farmer. Uh, as as uh, Matthew 13 speaks, the farmer sows the seed. It says in parable of the sower. Another one, the farmer sows the seed. It says in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13 also, in the parable of wheat and tares, the farmer is the father. The seed is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That's the work of the father. That's how the father works. He sows his message, the gospel of the kingdom. The Father is doing that. And after that, Jesus also did that. He sows the seed. And again, to all of us, our work is to sow the seed also. That is our work as a kingdom, sons and daughters of, the, of, 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 of God. Hallelujah. Sow the seed. Sow the seed. Sow the seed. Then rest and sleep. Why rest and sleep? Let the seed grow. Let the Holy Spirit work on the seed. We are not the one who will make the seed grow. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is the work of the of the uh, of the of the governor. When we begin to receive the seed, we start sowing the seed everywhere. Everywhere. Then when I begin to sow the seed to you, Sister Pia. I will let the Holy Spirit work His way towards you. So when you start growing, when you start flourishing, when you start doing the time, you begin, you begin your journey becoming a believer. Then you become a disciple. Then you become a son or a daughter. But these three, again, these three are not the harvest. This is on the way to the harvest. So when you have been a, when you've been a, ripen that is the harvest and the harvest again it speaks about the fatherhood of god in all of us hallelujah this is only this start but uh, i'm all I'm, all I'm already on fire on this uh, on, on the subject that we are talking here <laughs> because jesus christ it speaks so much so much about the father we should remember that that this kingdom is not the kingdom of Jesus Christ. This kingdom is the kingdom of our Father. Hallelujah. That's why even even uh, even uh, Kibuloi, he he is wrong. He is wrong. This is not the kingdom of Jesus Christ. This is the kingdom of the Father God, whom Jesus Christ led to be uh, led uh, to restore it and reestablish it. But he speaks. That this kingdom is of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. So again, every kingdom has a constitution and laws. Okay? Every kingdom provides principles by which the citizens are to live and be governed. Constitution, laws are good. In the kingdom of God, Constitution is called the Bible. It is also known as God's law. The kingdom constitution it starts with God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God. 
So that's our constitution. In the beginning, God. But in every constitution of our land, of our land, it always starts. Uh, can I can I see that? We, in 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 the constitution of the Philippines, it says that we, the sovereign Filipino people, that's the start of our constitution. We, the sovereign Filipino people. But our constitution in the kingdom starts in the beginning, God. Okay. So that's true. Oh, hallelujah, yes, sir. I receive some power. Amen. So. amen. <laughs> I'm always crying of what you're revealing. Of. Amen, amen, amen. Every word, every word a king speaks, every word a king speaks has the power of law and will be accomplished. Remember that. Every word of a king speaks has the power of law and will be accomplished. I remember in the book of Isaiah, this is, a, this is one of my favorite. He says, whatever pleases me, I will accomplish. No one will hinder what I will do. He is the king. He owns everything. When the king speaks, it becomes a law. When, 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 when his words becomes a law, the law will be fulfilled whether we like it or not. There's one thing that I will tell you. You know, sovereignty... Sovereign, he's a sovereign God. Sovereignty happens everywhere. Sovereignty happens everywhere. This is sovereignty. This is, this is what sovereignty says. Sovereignty happens, happens, uh, happens in our life whether we like it or not. It, when, when this is God's will, this is the will of God for everything, sovereignty works. That is why, that is why. We, we experienced God in the time we needed Him. That is His sovereignty. Remember uh, when, you were, when you met an accident, when you almost died, but you, have not, you, you, you didn't experience death? Because the sovereign will of God protected you from death. That's the sovereign work of God. Hallelujah. But didn't you know, didn't you know, in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, there are no sovereignty of God. <laughs> Hello, Pastor Joey. In the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, there are no sovereignty of God. Which I will say, one of them bring them on camera. You call them in. And you call them. Uh, they're from. Try not enough. No sovereignty of God. Why? Why? Because the sons and daughters of the king works in the will of God. Hallelujah. The sons and daughters of the king understands the power of working in the will of God. So the sons and daughters works, understands, and, and work with God on the matter of his will. That is why in the kingdom of God, there is no sovereignty. In the kingdom of God, the mind of God, our mind, our mind works with the mind of God. Our talk uh, speaks the talk of God. Our action moves in the acts of God. So in the kingdom of God, God and the sons and daughters become one these things only happens in the kingdom of god many people know how good they are they are they are, they are theologians they are they are apostles they are prophets they are teachers they are they, are, they have big churches everything everything but they continually struggles in knowing what the will of god is example matthew 24 he speaks about earthquakes, troubles. He speaks about wars and rumors of wars, the coming of pestilence. This, this needs to come. Whatever your prayer is to, to stop this, it will never stop. The Lord, the, 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 the Lord says, trouble not yourself, for all of these things will surely come. It has to come. Why? Uh, the Lord needed those earthquakes and pestilence and everything to shake the kingdom of darkness. 
And when these negative things happens on earth, this is the time, the, the solution of earth, which is the kingdom messengers of God, will begin to arise and bring in the solution and cleanse everything that's happening. Hallelujah. And we will see this on our time. Hallelujah. You don't need to block what the Lord is, uh, has already been, the, uh, been, 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 been saying. And it's so, and it's so, uh, it's so funny. It's so funny that many preachers, many prophetic, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a prophetic guy. Huh? I'm a prophetic guy. I love prophetic. But I, I, I'm, it's funny that many prophet, many people who are prophesying the end times, they're speaking about earthquake and everything. This has been spoken by Jesus Christ. They are, they are, they are all, they are all, what's it? they're only, they are only repeating what Jesus Christ has spoken. What they're doing? Uh, oh, there will be an earthquake. There will be. Hey, hello, Pastor Randy. Hey, will you please? Jesus Christ already spoken those things. Prophetic, prophetic ministry doesn't always speaks about prophesying what's coming in the future because Jesus already spoke about the future. Hallelujah. One time I will discuss to you the use of the fivefold ministry. It's, it's different from, from the church's use of the fivefold ministry. It's different from the kingdom pools of the fivefold ministry. Every time the king speaks, oh hallelujah, you need to go with it. Hello, Pastor Elon. You know to be one, you've got to, to be one with the king's word because his word will be will really manifest whether we like it or not. And by manifesting, by manifesting the word of the king, you will surely understand why it has to happen. It's the beauty in the kingdom. God will tell you why it has to happen. Why it is happening. You know what? It is, it is such a great, great, great blessing. God, God has really blessed. Oh, hallelujah. God has really blessed my life, my family during this time, during this time of a crisis. <laughs> Actually, I, 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 don't, I don't have any work. I don't have any, but I, I, I do not have any uh, savings. I don't have any savings. But you know what? I just kept on doing. I, was, I just kept doing my assignment. My assignment, my assignment. And you know what? I've experienced what I didn't experience when I have a work. God has blessed me for the last two months. And blessing kept on pouring. Hallelujah. And I know somebody, someone, I want to tell him his name because God will really reward him. And he, God already rewarded him. That's only the start. Somebody sent me. Somebody sent me. Uh, actually, uh, in pesos, that's about uh, uh, 10,000 pesos. 10,000 pesos. And uh, on the first, he sent me about 25,000 pesos. You know, during the time and they're not asking for it, suddenly... They receive uh, more than sixty thousand pesos because because they intended to bless. Okay, I'll work on this. I will finish this. I will I will finish this. <laughs> Somebody asked me, "What is tithes and offering in the kingdom?" This is the best explanation. Okay, tithes tithes are laws. Uh, tithes are tithes are uh, uh, taxes. Tithes are taxes, and uh, offering are, are investment, okay? Tithes are taxes. When you speak about tithes, it's 10%. It's a tenth. It's a tenth of your profit. So remember, taxes are also fixed. So you will get something from your income and give it to the government. That's the way tithes works. So you receive a blessing. And you give a part of it for for the for the ministry of God. So tithes and taxes are the same. Okay, tithes and taxes are the same. Hello, I'm Ariel and uh, Sister Pressy. 
And offering is investment. Offering is investment. So when you speak about tithes, in tithes, you will not earn from this. You will not get profit because this is tithes. Okay? But in giving your tithes, in giving your taxes, taxes protects the citizen who pays their taxes. Okay? <laughs> taxes protects the citizen who pays their taxes. The citizens who pays their taxes can demand from their government anything that they need because they are taxpayers. Okay? Hey, uh, Mr. President, we need water from this place. We need water. We need electricity. Hey, Mr. President, we need hospital. Why? Because you are a taxpayer. You can demand. You can demand anything from the government. And also, taxes protects the citizen. That is why we have police. We have the army. We have the barangay, barangay leadership. We have we have the LGUs. These people are, are has been formed by the government to protect the citizens. You can sleep tight. You can sleep tight, and you can see the government personnel are still working. They're working not not only uh, uh, eight hours every day. No, they're working. 24/7, because they have been, they have been uh, uh, submitted themselves to the general public as as a public servant. So taxes protects you. Taxes protects you. Tithes protects you. Remember what the what the Bible says in tithes: the Lord will will, will take off those uh, those insects that uh, destroys destroys your your your, your plants. That's that's the work of the tithes. That's the word of that. It's taxes. It protects you. You will never profit. You will never profit. Okay. <laughs> so offering, offering. These are these are investments. Offering is beyond the tithes. So when you are so blessed, you give your tithe of ten percent. Remember, tithes is never twenty percent, thirty percent. It's ten percent. It's ten percent. God didn't. God doesn't want your 90% tax. He only needs your 10% tax. 10% tax as a way of your trust. Trust to him. Okay? As a way of your trust to him that even though you receive such kind of blessing, you are always willing to give the tenth. The tenth. So whether where will the tenth go? It doesn't matter. Okay? Hello, Amboroy. Now, in the offering, offering is beyond the 10%. Offering is your investment, so you want to be blessed, and you 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 give this offering, you give this offering to a ministry or to any uh, any uh, any any groups, because in this offering, you just want uh, uh, to to be blessed more by God, and offering is what we call investment. Offering investment. So when you give in offering, you will be blessed. You will be blessed in offering. This is where you will get your. Uh, this is where you expect. You expect so much blessing, because you invested from it. When you invest in a little sari sari store, so you will get a sari sari store. When you invest in a grocery, you will get a grocery. Okay. Maybe you're asking about seed. That's different. I'll, I will speak about the seed later. When you invest, uh, uh, whatever you invest, when you when you plant a mango, you will get a mango. When you plant a banana, you will get a banana. That's investment. So whatever you plant is, that's what you get. So here it is. Here it is. Remember this: you cannot invest, you cannot give your offering without giving first your tithes or your taxes. I'll repeat it again. You can never invest or you can, you can never give your offering without first giving your tithes or your taxes. In reality, when you, when you begin to, to uh, get your business, when you begin to build your business, 
and operate the business without tax, the government will close the business. That's illegal. You cannot open any kind of business without first filing your tax. Remember your tax? It involves a police clearance, SSS, sanitary permit, uh, building permit. There's a lot, there's a lot. You, you, you've already given a lot of money, but still, you do not have profit. <laughs> That's taxes. That's what it is. So when you open a business, when you give an offering without tax, the business will be closed. You need first to pay your taxes, your dues, before you can open your business. That's how government works. Okay, so that's that's how it is. So even though there's there's a group that says uh, Pais is not already, uh, Pais is not already uh, doing today. Pais is, is an Old Testament thing. No, Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus Jesus never abolished the law. He completed it, and he made it beautiful. We have your tithes, we have our offering, and there's another one, the seed. The seed is a is a great one. The seed is a kingdom, it's a powerful seed. In the tithes, you give your tenth, you, you will not have profit, but you will be protected. In offering, you give a, a, a beyond your tenth, beyond your tenth. And from there, when you plant a mango, you will get a mango. When you plant a banana, you will get a banana. When you plant a sari sari store, you will get sari sari store. So that's what investment is. Okay, but with seed, seed is a very powerful thing in the kingdom. When you begin to give your seed, when you assign that seed, when you assign that seed, you give this seed as a seed faith, as a seed faith, it will grow you more than you expect. I remember, so this, I, I love the, the word of Jacob during the uh, severe famine. It's a severe famine. It's a great, great, great famine. But Jacob, when he heard that God blesses him, that God is with him, Jacob broke the seed down. And after a year, the Bible says, Jacob, hallelujah, earned hundredfold beyond what he has given. Oh, hallelujah. He assigned the seed. He remembers the word of the king. The word of the king in him is a law. <laughs> the word of the king in him is a law. Do not just receive the king in your Do not just receive the word of the king as a blessing. It's a law. When you make the word of the king as a law, the law's word, the law's word needs to work and needs to accomplish itself. That's why the Bible says, my word my word will not come back to me until it accomplished its purpose. The word of the king will not come back to him until it accomplishes its purpose. The word of the king, the law, works mightily and works according to its purpose. And it will never come back to the source and report what, what, it, uh, what it produces. Not until it produces things beyond it. The king designed from it to happen. Hallelujah. So when you assign a seed, when you assign a seed in, in, in investment, when you when you plant a sari sari storm, you will get sari sari storm. But in the seed, when you plant, when you plant a sari sari storm, when you plant a sari sari storm, in the time of uh, farming, in the time of nothing, in life, but in faith, you give this seed and you said, Lord, this is only the thing that I have, but I will give this seed. I will plant this seed. I will offer this seed. The Tsari Sari store will produce in you a grocery store or even a supermarket. Hallelujah. The, the seed works with the law. The seed works with the word of the king. When you hear when the word, when the king declares to you his word, be ready to give your seed. Because that seed will produce in you 
more than you expect. More than, more than, more than you expect. Hallelujah. You know, you know what? You know what, guys? During the time when, I, when I'm starting, I love giving. I love giving. I love giving that I have given, I have given many, lots of money already. Cell phones, dresses, watches. I've already made this in for a lot of pastors and friends and leaders. I, I made all of these things. And, hallelujah, those seeds that I have planted before, I'm sowing it during these times of problems, crisis, and troubles. If you will not plant a seed, what will you expect? What will you expect? The seed is a powerful tool in the kingdom of God. We have fights, we have offering, we have the seed. Hallelujah. So this is how the kingdom works with the word of the king. Okay? Hallelujah. <laughs> so again, seed is powerful. When, when God speaks to you a word, begin to plant a seed. Do not base your seed, do not base your seed according to what you have. Seed is much powerful when you do this according to your faith beyond what you have. When you seek to, when you seek to have this, when you seek to, get, and the Lord speaks to you, and whatever seed you have, do it. I remember this time, I remember this time. I was filled with so many troubles in my life. Many troubles, really, really, really. And suddenly, I was, I was so, the devil continually attacks me. The devil attacks me. He attacks me. He loves to attack me. He loves to attack me. And I remember, I have this, uh, I have this box. I have this box, a plastic box. Uh, a Tupperware box filled with five pesos and ten pesos coins. And I, I, I got that from my, from my drawer. I, I, I took that, I got that, and I brought the, the plastic box to our treasurer. And I gave the plastic, plastic box to her, and she said, Pastor, what is this? I'm going to seed. I'm going to give this as a seed. Hallelujah. I'm going, this, I'm, I'm giving this to the ministry as a seed. And you know what? The, 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 the cost of the, the, the coins in there is more than 10,000. More than 10,000. It's, it's more than 10,000. Why did I do that? You know, when you are under attack, when you are under attack, the best thing that you could do instead of uh, rebuking, rebuking the devil, the best thing that you could do, plant a seed. You know why? Hello, Jane. Hello, hello, Paul. You know why? The only thing that Satan cannot do is to give. Satan doesn't know how to give. Satan is allergic. He hates giving because he loves destroying. He loves, uh, he loves, to, uh, he loves to get something that, that, that doesn't belong to him. That's not the work of Satan. But giving is something that he hates to do. So when you do, when, when you do something that he hates, that is giving, and giving is worship, huh? Giving is worship. <laughs> you cannot worship God without giving, huh? So when, when you start giving, hallelujah, you will see the cost, the attacks of the devil will suddenly be broken and destroyed because of your giving. I'm not talking here about just giving. I'm just talking, I'm talking here about the principle. Hello, Brother Romel. The principles of the kingdom with respect to these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have the tithes, the offering, then the seed. Hallelujah. The seed is powerful. Hallelujah. So I continue. I continue in doing that. And I have... Oh, hallelujah. Hear this. Hear this. I never ask God to bless me with money. I never ask God. Never. I only do my assignment. I ask God for my assignment. I ask God what he wants me to do. And I'm working in my assignment. I never ask God for house. I never ask God for anything. Because when you ask God for the house, clothing, food, and, and everything, 
That's, that is the prayer. That is the lifestyle of the pagan or the unbelievers. Since time, I never did that. <laughs> Since time, I never did that. I only work on my assignment. The how, how little it is, you, you, are not, uh, you are not known. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your assignment, your assignment fulfills your destiny. Your destiny is strengthens your identity. Hallelujah. That is where, that is where uh, a Lucifer fell. Lucifer has his assignment. Then when he begins to speak his five, I will. That's the time. He, he retracted himself from his assignment. There, there is where he lost his identity. And when he lost his identity, bam, he was thrown. He was thrown out from the heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm, I'm so, I'm so, oh, hallelujah. Please read the, uh, read uh, the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Something, verse 9, verse 9. Oh, hallelujah. If, if you could excuse me first, I'll, I'll get it, okay? This has been my uh, my foundation. That is why even during this time that I I am not uh, during this time that I am not financially capable. I am not uh, I am not worrying. I am not uh, anything. I know. Look in Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse. Verse 8. Verse 8. It says here, And God is able, look at this, huh? And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. <laughs> Again, I will repeat that. I'll repeat that. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work as it is written he has scattered abroad the gifts of the poor his righteousness endures forever it says here in verse 6 remember this whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Because this has been used by everybody, by everybody, as a form of prosperity teaching, as a form of uh, money matters and everything. But this is really power. What, what, what Paul is saying here is really power. It's a secret inside of the law. Many churches hate the law. But it's the law that works out everything. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll continue this. The king's word is law. It says here, it says here in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 8.4, the king's word is law. No one can ask him, why are you doing this? So when, when God speaks of something, do not refuse it. Hallelujah. Back it back yeah. Law power mode. Oh my God. Okay. So when the king speaks, no one can ask him, why, why are you doing this? Nobody can do that. Next verse. Now we know that the law is good. If one uses it, uses it legitimately, the law is good. The law is good if one uses it legitimately. So many, many people doesn't understand the law. Doesn't, doesn't understand the law. So if you understand the law, use it legitimate with legitimate mindset, with understanding. With right understanding. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy, making wise the simple. How can how can be the law become so bad? No, the law of the Lord is good. It's perfect. It says it, it's perfect. Hallelujah. 
we need to work on the law of the Lord. Excuse me again. Hallelujah. It's another verse. So the law is holy. The law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. So we can define here what the law really is. Every kingdom, every kingdom's citizen works in the constitution and laws. Let's, let us understand the beauty of the law. Remember what I've told you? God has given the law to Moses because he loves, the, he loves the people. The law protects the people so that the people, the Jews, will not go beyond the law. It, uh, it, gives, them a, it gives them an idea what they need to do and what, what the things, <laughs> are, the, are the things uh, they do not want to do. Okay? The law protects the people. The law gives freedom to the people. Many people thought that the law bothers them. The law, like so, it holds them. No. The law is perfect. The law is holy. The law is good. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh, I will not discuss this anymore. I tell you the truth. It's in Matthew 5 verse 18. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Look, it says here, not, not any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. The word of the king, every time, God is fixed. Every time the king is fixed, it becomes a law. It is a law. And every time you speak, every time you declare something, it becomes a law. When you speak negatively, it becomes a law. <laughs> when you declare something to your son, to your daughter, to your wife, to your life, to your business, that are negatives, it becomes a law. And whatever you decree, it affects those people whom you decreed negatively. But when you speak things that are, that are uh, delightful, that are good, that, that, that came from God, it becomes a law. That's why in the kingdom, when I learned the kingdom, uh, I, I, I departed from the negative thoughts, from the negative thoughts. I, I, I don't have uh, words of this, uh, sana, baka sakali, pwede na. No. Every time I speak words, I speak with, uh, with, uh, with, with excellencies, with goodness. Hallelujah. I speak with blessing, which I always say, if you cannot speak something that is good, you need to shut up your mouth. <laughs> God gave you the mouth. God gave you that mouth so that you will speak blessing. So that you will become an extension of God's blessing to others. Though how bad those people are. Don't say, oh, those bad. No. <laughs> reverse, what, reverse their lives. When you see your father, your mother, your father, mother, your brothers, your sisters that are uh, they're, they're reflecting uh, a bad attitude. Reverse it. Oh, hallelujah. Here is my brother again. He's so good. The declaration of blessing destroys the work of the enemy in their lives. Remember this. Hallelujah. That's why even in traffic, even in every situation, I declare fun. I declare the best things. 
I do not want these negative things affect my life because my word becomes a law every time I speak the word because I am the son of the king. Hallelujah. And the image and likeness of my king is in me. Understand this. Understand this. Hallelujah. So do uh, take out, take off every every negative, every negative things in your life. Hallelujah. I want so I just talk about. Okay. A kingdom is a government. A kingdom is a government. The government is the ruling authority structure through which the king governs his kingdom. Yes, the kingdom is a government. Here's the good thing. The Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Isaiah 32, 22. So when you, see, when you speak about Isaiah 32, 22, this is what it speaks. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the Lord of the kingdom of God is our judge, lawgiver, and king. Judge speaks about the judiciary system. Lawgiver speaks about the parliamentary system. King speaks about the executive branch. So, in the government of God, these three are not separated. These three are one. So, when you receive the government of God in you, you, you have been given the judiciary system, the judiciary branch, the parliamentary branch, and the executive branch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> as, as the judge, you don't judge people, but you bring justice. You bring justice and you put the word to use. You put the good and evil it's to its use. Remember, during this crisis, this is evil, but God turns it to good. And all, all of us also, we've been affected by this evil happening, but we should turn this evil happening to good. We bring justice. We are judge of the Lord for this, for, for this world. We are judge of the Lord for this world. We don't judge people to condemn them. But we judge. We judge uh, the work of the devil. Hallelujah. In the life of people. And we bring justice to the people that needs it. Also, we are lawgiver. We are we are we have the parliamentary system. What you speak, it happens. Hallelujah. Remember this: every time you speak, it becomes a law. <laughs> every time you speak, it becomes a law. So don't just speak and speak and speak. When when I begin to learn the kingdom, I learn to cease. My tongue is speaking so much. If I can say nothing good, I cease to speak. And if the Lord push me to speak things, that's the, that's the time I speak. I never speak. I never speak just to say something. I speak only because it should be. It should be. Uh, uh, it, it should. It should be heard. I will only speak because it is relevant. But if you're going to speak just to say something, stop it. Stop it. Whatever negative things you will, you will speak, it will come back to you. It will affect your life. It will affect your life. So start, start asking the Holy Spirit to change your mouth. Boom. The Lord is king. We are the executive branch. We are the king. We implement these things. We bring, we bring everything that God gives us into fruition. Hallelujah. That's how powerful the government of God in this kingdom in our lives the kingdom is a sovereign of god working with men the kingdom is the sovereignty of god working with men remember earlier i told you sovereignty doesn't work already with us because the sovereignty of god works with us already unlike unlike before whether you like it or not you will follow the sovereignty of god this time you never pray you never pray to god to receive yes no and wait you pray to god to receive yes and amen. Why? Because whatever God's will is, that is your prayer. That is why you receive yes and amen. When the Lord says, oh, do not do that, do not do this, do not first uh, 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 work on this or prioritize this, so don't do it. You don't do it. So whatever the will of God is, you follow. Okay? The kingdom. 
The, the kingdom is the gathering together of all things into one in Christ. It's the gathering together of all things into one in Christ. Okay? Not only the people, but everything. Everything. Everything will come into its original order. Everything. The trees, the, the, the land, the animals, everything. Hallelujah. The kingdom is reconciliation. The kingdom is salvation. Okay? When you speak about, about the kingdom, there's reconciliation here. There is no competition here. There is no comparison here. There is no arrogance here. There is reconciliation. There is always humility. There is also submission. There is, there is real righteousness. Uh, really, this is strong. The kingdom is salvation. As I told you, when you speak salvation, a part of the kingdom, you have the salvation that you receive oh, will, will, will not be empowered. Remember the words of Paul? I am not ashamed of the gospel of the kingdom of God. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is the kingdom of God. It gives power for salvation to those who believe. The kingdom of God gives power for salvation. Many people receive a believe Jesus Christ without power. They've been prayed by the Holy Spirit. But look at them. They don't have power. They don't have power to... To uh, rebuke the devil, uh, to win, to win in sin, they don't have power to live the lifestyle of God. I've been there, I've been there, and I do not want to come back. <laughs> Hallelujah! The kingdom of God empowered my salvation, empowered my life. Hallelujah! The King embodies the whole. We cannot separate the kingdom from. The... Amen. Yes, you cannot separate. Actually, you can separate the kingdom, the King, and the righteousness. Because righteousness, that's the righteousness of the king. Okay? So the kingdom is regeneration and transformation. Okay? You don't, you, every time you move in the kingdom, every time you walk in the kingdom, it is inside the kingdom where you will experience transformation. You've been regenerated, hallelujah, by the spirit, and you will be transformed inside the kingdom. It's every man presented perfect to God, perfect in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 or verse 24. Hallelujah. Kingdom is God all in all. Hallelujah. You will experience the totality of God from day to day, glory to glory to glory to glory. Kingdom is God and man being one. When you're in the kingdom, you will see that God and you are being one. Hallelujah. Every kingdom has privileges. These are the freedoms, rights, and benefits accorded to citizens by their government. The Bible says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. This verse actually speaks about, uh, about uh, the people that supports Paul. The people that supports Paul. Even, even Paul says, Paul says, uh, even though if, even you don't give me, even though even you don't give me, a support. I have my own business to support what God gives me. But, 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 but Paul is so, but Paul is so blessed with that because these people once loves to support him. Hallelujah. And that's why he, he, he says these words, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. This is an answer. This is actually an answer for the people that supports Paul on his ministry. Hallelujah. And even I, and uh, if you can see my ministries, I'm doing this, I'm preaching the word of the kingdom everywhere. And if you're there, if, you're, if God is touching you, if God is uh, uh, pursuing you to support my life, my ministry, and this is what I'll say, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You know what? When you give to a poor to a poor man, that's that's good, but it's very easy. It's easy to help a poor man. But you've got to but you've got to know something. When you give to somebody who has a business, who has this kind of lifestyle and is very good, hallelujah. Whatever that man has will be also be given unto you. Hallelujah. I remember this is my testimony. I have my friend who is very good in singing. He, he has this tape, and I invested in his tapes. I love his, his cassette tapes, his songs. I buy 
boxes of it, and I use it as, and I use it as a truck. Every time I ride the tricycle, a bus, a taxi, this is what I give, not, not a truck, this is what I give. I invested to him um, how, how many cartons of that. You know what happened to him? What happened to me? God gave me hallelujah, the skill also to create songs, to write songs. And I also have my own songs, and I already have my own uh, uh, gospel album. Why? I invested to this man. I invested to this man. So when you invest something to a person who is blessed by God, whatever God's blessing that God has given to that man, you will also receive. So you also if you do to a prophet, you will get the prophet's reward. Hallelujah. So God, God's blessing is always in us. There's really a power, there's really a power when when we continually understand, understand everything that we do. Here it is. I will, I will just read this one. In Philippians 4, verse 14. Yet it was, it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians, yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me. No church entered into partnership with me. In giving, and receiving except you only, the Philippians only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. So the Philippians, the Philippians church, they supported, their, they are in partnership with Paul. And when, when Paul was in Thessalonica, the Philippians also again sent their help. Verse 17, not that I seek the gift, hallelujah, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. Hallelujah. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. The truth. The truth. You know what? I am not used, I am not used uh, to do this. I'm ashamed. But God pushes me. I, I'm used to supporting my ministry because I have my work. But God pushes me, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm not doing it. So God is stop my work. God is stop my work. He, he's pushing me. That is why, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it. Because of verse 17. Not that I seek, not, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases their credit. God, the Lord told me, Jay, do not deny them of their blessing. Do not deny them of their favor. When, when they support you, I will also bless them all the more. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God shall supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. For our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Sometimes people are just uh, using these words without using the whole context. Hallelujah. So again, again, I thank God. I thank God for his words. It, it gives us light, it gives us freedom, it gives us wisdom, it gives us strength, it transforms us, it gives us, it leads us to our assignment, leading to our destiny. I thank God for that. Hallelujah. And uh, again, uh, I'm through with this with this topic on the kingdom and its citizen. Hallelujah. And lastly, every kingdom has an army. The army of the kingdom is not us. The army of the kingdom is the angels. The army of the kingdom is the angels, it's not us. Hallelujah. I have lots of uh, experience about angels as well. God sends his angels to serve his ministers, to serve his children, to serve his servants. Do not, uh, do not work the angels as like a servant that you can, uh, uh, that you can uh, let them do things, everything. No. The angels are sent. To, to, to minister to you, to, uh, to assist you in the work of God's kingdom in your life. They're always there. They're always in your midst. Hallelujah. They're always preparing him to them themselves every time you arise from your sleep. They're excited. They're excited. And they're, they're, they're in joyful mode every time you're about to rise from your sleep. They're guarding you. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing. 
This is for the cost of the father's ministry that he has given in you. The army is not us. The army is not men. The army is the angels that God has given for us. Each one of us, we have, we have lots of uh, assigned angels to all of us. Some have, some have 20, some have 30. Uh, um, angels, so true, confirming my calling as spoken by Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. There's this uh, so theologian that uh, uh, actually he, 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 he counted, he counted, he counted the numbers based on whatever, no? and he, he divided with the numbers of the believers, and he says, if this is true, maybe just a figure, every believer, we have 57,000 angels among us, each one. Each, each believer has more than 50,000 angels. Mm. Hallelujah. That's how God, that's how God protected us. That's how God protected the cost, the assignment that he has given us. Hallelujah. So in this manner, in this work, let's just praise God. Let's just thank God. As a citizen of the kingdom, as the sons and daughters of the king, God has greatly blessed us, favored us, gives us progression everywhere we go. Hallelujah. And you will see. You will experience things you will you never experienced before, you never heard before. Be ready on these things. Tomorrow, two o'clock p.m., I'll be speaking about the brand, Kingdom brand. Join with me two o'clock tomorrow, and on Monday we will start again at uh, one p.m. Okay, so I thank you for your time. It's already uh, one hour and twenty minutes, and. Uh, those, uh, those, my friends, Filipinas, I will be speaking uh, every 10.30 in the evening. Uh, the Filipino message. Okay? So let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify you. We thank you at this time. We thank you for your words. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing us with so much, so much understanding, so much knowledge of God that we can work our way Oh Lord God, in fulfilling your destiny because of your grace, because of your strength, because of your courage. Lord, thank you. Thank you for guarding us, guiding us, and making our life in true progression. Lord, we continually ask for your truth. Lord, speak your truth to us. Fill our, fill our hunger, our thirst for more of your revelation. I thank you, Lord God, for these people, oh Lord God, uh, Pastor Joey Linobla, uh, Pastor Roland Gallo, Pastor uh, oh, Sister Pia, Manzano Bain, Brother A.R., Pastor Ernie Hernandez, Brother Ronald Donato, Sister Jane Angeles, Amber Roy Saltico, Sister Lorna, Pastor Waylo, Amber George, Lord, and everyone, and everyone who joined with me right now. Lord, continually manifest the power of the kingdom in their lives. Let them be owed by what your kingdom has. Oh God, thank you. Lord, favor their lives. Lord, bring their lives into the great fruition and people will be blessed upon them. Thank you. Oh God, thank you. Fill them, fill them, fill them with more. Fill them with confidence. Fill them with excitement. Fill them with the power that you have invested with them. Strengthen the power with authority. Oh God, we glorify you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Once again, thank you. So we have a, we have a great week. We have a great week. <laughs> And uh, tomorrow I'll be speaking again uh, at 2 o'clock p.m. So please ask others to join our group, Limitless Kingdom. Limitless Kingdom is a private group for those people who really desire to understand the kingdom. Those who are just watching or just seeing or just interested. No, I will, I will take other people from the group 
and I will, I would like to join any other people who are seeking more of the kingdom. So please ask them to join. Those who are seeking for the kingdom, ask them to join our group, Limitless Kingdom, and we will experience limitless power, limitless uh, 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 excellences, limitless extravagance, uh, hallelujah, limitless favor from our from the kingdom of our God in King. Amen. Good afternoon. Bye-bye. Love you. God bless.